Hello everyone, welcome to China KIS Academy. I'm Dr. Krishna Anand and today we are going to discuss about a very interesting concept from geomorphology part of world geography, right? So world physical geography has this component called continental drift. So earlier we discussed about plate tectonics, right? The movement of the various lithospheric plates and before that the interior structure of the earth. But this is in continuation to that, there is important phenomena to learn called continental drift. So the first question is, what is continental drift? What is the concept? Right? There are two words here, continental and drift. So this basically is denoting again movement. But what kind of movement? Why specifically this movement called drift? Right? So let's look into that. Now, first of all, we'll look into dictionary meaning. All right? So dictionary meaning says that it's basically driving movement or force, right? So it is a driving movement or force that includes impulse, impetus and pressure, right? So drifting incorporates these three things, impulse, impetus and pressure, right? So, always remember drifting is not just movement, but a movement accompanied by impulsive action, sudden action, an impetus, a support provided and pressure, right? So, these three things are there in the dictionary meaning of drifting, right? So, it's basically to be carried along by currents of water or air, right? Or any circumstantial force for that matter. So this is the complete understanding of the word drift, all right? So remember these three things, impulse, impetus and pressure when we are talking about drifting, all right? Now let's look further. So basically there is a speculation, right? The word is speculation. The idea before continental drift came, there was lots of speculation about continents might have drifted. It was not sure, right? People were saying that it may be happening. So there was a probability involved of what? Drifting, right? So what happened? First person who thought of this was Abraham Ortelius in 1596, the end of 16th century. So almost 400 years back, somebody thought that continents might have drifted from one position to the other, right? So, what else? It was developed fully by Alfred Wegener, a German meteorologist in 1912, right? Just around First World War, if you remember. So, there were lots of advancement in science and technology during the World Wars. So, one of the concepts that was developed was the continental drift theory and Alfred Wegener is called the father of this theory, right? Then, Wegener published the details in his book called The Origin of Continents and Oceans. Remember this? In German, it was the origin of continents and oceans. Later, it was translated. So, the earlier it was published in 1915 and later on it was translated into English. So, the book is called The Origin of Continents and Ocean in which he talks about continental drift. Right? Now, what does this theory say? What are the basic postulation of this theory. So, this theory says that there was a supercontinent, not just a continent, a supercontinent, a huge sized continent called Pangaea. So, the name of the continent was given Pangaea, right? It was a large continent split into smaller fragments. So, what happened to Pangaea? A large continent split into smaller parts, right? How? Because of drifting. So, around 2 to 300 million years, right? Around Mesozoic period, right? So, 2 to 300 million years ago, there was a split in this super continent, right? And these drifted apart from the present day continents. So, it drifted to form what we have in present day. So, from one position, they changed their position. So, now they were separate entities from one, right? 
and they drifted from the original position to the next position and to the next position. This movement of from one position to the other position is called drifting. And what happened? Pangaea drifted after breaking into smaller fragments. Right? So that is the concept. Now let's look at that. What are the evidences for this? How did this concept get evident? Right? What were supporting evidences? So first was something called jigsaw fit of continents. Now it's a game where you make a complete picture by adding smaller bits, right? So if a smaller bit of a complete picture is broken into parts and from which you construct a complete picture, that game is called jigsaw fit. It's like a puzzle. So jigsaw fit of continents was done for this evidence. Then what is this? Same age, right? The age of formation was same for all the different parts. What else? Placer deposits the gold deposits basically, the tillites, the glacial deposits, similar fossils, right, of reptiles and plants, and what else? Animal behavior. So, these six important evidences were given in support of the theory that Pangaea broke into smaller fragments and moved away from each other, right? So, this was given through these evidences, all right? So let's move further and look at these evidences one by one. So the first one is jigsaw fit, right? So what does it say? Basically, matching of the continents, right? So what is happening here? The continents boundaries, if you see, all the continents, if you put together, right? Their edges, their coastal boundaries match. And then you can form this entire landmass. And you can think how Pangaea must have looked as an entity together, right? You can put them together into one, right? So this together into one is Pangaea and it broke. So it formed Africa, Arabia, India, Antarctica, South America, Australia, so many different, different continents, all right, from the single one. So the idea is that the coastlines of South America and Africa, right? This is Africa and this is South America. You see this? The coastlines are matching and this is a very unique feature, right? Then there was a person called Bullard. In 1964, he made this composite fitting map, right, for the Atlantic margins. And then he found that these across the Atlantic, right, these margins fit exactly. It means they must be part of one system which have broken apart. So their edges match, right? So once it was together, now it is away. Right? So it was done through mapping in 1964 by Bullard. All right? Now, next is that rocks of same age. Here is the term same age. So what happens is that this is Atlantic and on both the coast, the age of the rocks are similar. Right? They formed at the same time. And through what we get it? Radiometric dating. Right? So radiometric dating of the rocks across the Atlantic Ocean on both the sides of the continent, we find that it is of the same age. And South America and Africa belong to Jurassic age from Mesozoic. Right? So Jurassic age? So Jurassic, you must have, if watched the movie Jurassic Park, it talks about Mesozoic period, right? The time of dinosaurs. So this rock formation on both the sides are basically of Jurassic age. And this implies that ocean never existed before that time. So this ocean, which is here now, was not there. The land was united, right? Then they moved apart for 200 million years, right? So that is one of the evidence. Next is the tillite deposits. What are tillites? If you remember glacial landforms, we talked about till deposits, tillites. So what is that? It is the basically sedimentary rock made from glacial deposits, right? The glacial till deposits, right? And Gondwana system, right? Gondwana system is southern part. The northern part is Angara land, right? The Eurasian part. And the southern part is called Gondwana land. So Gondwana system of sediments from where? From India, right? 
So Gondwana system of sediments, which is stillites from India, are found in six different landmasses across southern hemisphere. It means what? These landmasses were once together. That's why these deposits are found on all of those, right? Because they went away. So deposits also went away with them, right? So what are those? Madagascar, Africa, Antarctica, Falkland Island, Australia and India. This is the distribution of tillites, which says that once these entire masses of land were together and then they drifted apart from each other, right? So they have common is tillites. All these places have tillites, which is common from Gondwana deposits of India. There is something called placer deposits, right? So let's look at this. Basically, they are the deposits of gold. So gold deposits at Ghana in Africa, right? The Ghana coast in western northern part of Africa, basically completely lacks of its source. There is gold deposit, but you cannot relate it to the nearby rocks. So from where did it come? So that's the thing that it was part of basically Brazilian plateau across the Atlantic. So just imagine this scenario that it was part of Brazilian plateau. So Ghana in Africa has obtained the gold part from Brazilian plateau, right? So this is strong evidence again, right? And then we have distribution of fossils. What are fossils? These are the remains of flora and fauna, right? Trapped under the deposits of rocks, of sediments. So distribution of fossils is similar across the entire land masses that is evident. So Africa, America, India, Antarctica, Australia, they have similar fossils. It means those plants and animals were evenly distributed on the landmass. So what fossils? Like animal fossil, Lystrosaurus. Remember I said it was Jurassic. So you have dinosaurs, right? So fossils of dinosaurs like Mesosaurus, Lystrosaurus, right? These are found on the continental margins of these continents and a fern core Glossopteris. So Glossopteris is one of the ferns, right? It's a shrub where which is found across these continents. So these are the fossil evidences saying that these plants and animals were part of the same landmass once. Now they are distributed, right? So this is another evidence. Then what we have is very interestingly animal behavior. It's very interesting why? Because it's talking about behavior of animal. Many people say that it's a myth, but there are strong evidences for this, right? That there is an animal called lemmings. Where is it? It's basically in Norway, in Scandinavian part, right? So what has happens? Because of the drifting, land has moved away to the west. So what happens? These animals called lemmings basically move to west in search of land because they used to go to west, migrate to west. But now the land has moved. So what happens? They fall off into the sea, right? And this has been judged as their suicidal tendency, but it's related to drifting apart. Earlier the land was there, so they used to go to the land in the west. Now the land has moved away and now sea is there in the between, so they fall off into the sea. So this was another idea saying that they commit suicide by jumping into the Norwegian coast. So this has been related many a times with that land has moved. Now sea has been there in the between two lands. So from one land, lemmings used to go to the other. Now because land has gone far, sea is there, so they jump into the sea. Alright, so this is one very interesting behavior of lemmings. Alright, next, this is the chronology 225, 135, 65 and present. Just see how the lands have drifted from one part to the other. 
earlier they were Pangaea, right, and Laurasia, Gondwana together, right. Then they moved 135 million years ago, 65 million years ago, and then they are in the current state. So they have moved away from each other, which is evident from what we saw in the six different evidences, right. So this was completely proposed by Alfred Wegener, and later on people made this through scientific discoveries, right. So what else we have to see here is how did it happen and what is the process. So when we talk about this, Wegener proposed that this movement was due to two kinds of forces, tidal force and pole fleeing force. He named it two forces, tidal force and pole fleeing force according to Wegener, right. So the polar fleeing force relates to rotation of the earth. So it is not pole, it is basically polar. Polar fleeing force was related to rotation of the earth and most of the scholars considered these forces insufficient for such kind of movement. So this evidence that was given that why they moved this how part and why part was not sufficient given by basically Wegener, right. So Wegener was unable to provide concrete mechanism for how this happened. So then what happened? Then Harry Hess, he proposed a theory in 1960s about sea floor spreading that we have already learned in plate tectonics lecture if you remember, right. So that newer material is coming out of the mantle, right. So, which is spreading across and there is mid-oceanic ridge formation, right? And there is a spread in sea floor. Then after sea floor spreading, people realize that, okay, continents must have gone away from each other, right? Because plates have moved away, they have drifted apart. So, there is a sea floor spreading. Then this theory got accepted, right? So, plate tectonics theory clarified this concept that because there is a movement of plates, right, so earlier they may have been together and now they have gone apart because of the plate tectonics, alright. So, plate tectonics theory made continental drift theory get scientifically accepted at last, alright. So, further let us take a question. What kind of question can be asked? So, read this statement. According to Wegener, all the continents formed single continental mass and mega ocean surrounded the same, right. Then supercontinent was named Panthalassa and mega ocean was called Pangaea, alright. Then Pangaea broke into two large continental masses as Laurasia and Gondwana forming southern and northern. It means this was southern and this was northern, right. Then we have continent of Gondwana was named after Gondwana region of central India, right. So these are the four statements. Now the idea is which of this statement is correct, right. So we have to find only the correct ones. So what are the options? Option A, 1 and 2 only, then we have 1 and 4 only, then we have 1, 3 and 4 only and all of the above. So as we have learned, let us look at these options, which of them are correct? So just find out yourself which one of them would be correct, okay, so let us see. Basically this is correct, answer is B, 1 and 4 are correct. Why these two are not correct? These two are correct statements, why? Because here it says supercontinent was named Panthalassa, but no, we have learned supercontinent was called Pangaea. So it is other way around, Panthalassa was the ocean, the large ocean, super ocean and Pangaea was the continent, that is why this is wrong, incorrect and what happens here, Gondwana is the southern part, not the northern part and Laurasia is the northern part, right. So that is why these two options are incorrect. So similar kinds of questions can be made from the entire concept of continental drift theory, alright. 
so we complete this continental drift concept right the theory and the evidences we have dis discussed in detail all right and what kind of questions can come up all right so in further lectures we'll be learning more about earth movements right so please like and subscribe to our youtube channel chanakya is academy and stay tuned thank you don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update